Welcome everybody to today's video. We're looking at the IL-76 Soviet Super Freighter for X-Plane. There have been quite a few videos now explaining how to start and fly this aircraft, but the original Russian autopilot has not yet been covered. In this video, we'll do a full flight using the original autopilot where possible. There will be a few sections where we have to use the tablet autopilot as an analog for switches that just don't exist in the sim but we will use the original autopilot as much as possible. So let's jump inside and start her up. We have four batteries to switch on. We put the ground power on, got two inverters up here, and we've got an APU converter. Turn the APU master on, the APU fuel, APU mode apparently to on, uh, open the flap and we'll start the APU. With that done we'll switch over to APU power, switch the ground power off. We've got some more converters to flick on on the right hand side here. I'm gonna switch on the beacon light and the nav lights. Go up top here we'll switch on the igniters and we can start all four engines. The engines don't sound quite as beefy as you'd expect given the size of this plane. We now switch on the engine generators, the engine bus ties, we can now switch the APU bus off and connect the 27 volt system. We can now stop the APU. Once that's done, we can close the APU flap, we can switch APU mode off, and we will just switch on all the fuel cross feeds. Just got to be sure that you switch on every single one of these switches down here. And then once you've done that, it's a pretty good idea to go back over them and check again. Back up top, switch on fuse large lights and wing lights. So we'll now go over and insert our flight plan. Just clear out the existing old one that was in there. I'm going to leave this bit here just so anybody who's unfamiliar with the Garmin GPS can see how to use it. You select your to, your from, your approach, and your arrival. Then once that is done, just take a look at your flight plan, make sure it all looks correct. And set your nav source to GPS. Also, this is a good time to set your nav radio for your approach later on. So very quickly to that tablet autopilot, initial vertical speed to 2000, initial airspeed to 250. If someone can find the buttons that control these values on the actual panel, then we won't have to touch this thing at all. But from now on, mostly we'll be using the original Russian autopilot. Also switch on your altimeter down here and switch it into feet. We'll set flaps two for takeoff here. Final step is to set takeoff trim. You want to set this to about five. And with that, we're ready to go. So we go full takeoff power and you'll want quite a long takeoff run because it's quite easy to store this out if you take off too soon, if you rotate too soon. Also, once we're in the air, we need to make sure we're going fast enough before we retract the flaps. Otherwise, you're gonna have a very bad time indeed. That's it, and rotate gear comes up. We'll activate auto throttle and nav mode on the pedestal autopilot here. So the autopilot is now following our flight plan. Auto throttle will be set 
to the speed we selected earlier and we'll also be climbing at the 2,000 feet per minute. So just being very careful about those flap speeds here. Just make sure you are as close as possible to your target speed before you retract them because you really need the extra lift that they give um, after your takeoff. And with a successful takeoff done, we can see the airfield disappearing behind us and we can continue to top of climb. So I'm just gonna go over here what those autopilot buttons I pressed actually do. So this one up top here, auto throttle. This one is nav. This one is master, which automatically switches on. Up here, you've got two enunciator lights for pitch and roll and one heading hold button, which is for one furthest left. All of those light up when you are in nav mode. So with that done, let's take a look at this thing in flight. This plane looks really, really good for a freeware aircraft. I think it's recently been updated. I know a lot of the tutorial videos I've seen have a much older version. So this is like the fancy updated version for X-Plane 11. So we're just checking our flight plan here, making sure we're facing the right direction. But while we're here, there is one really cool thing that I want to show you. And it's this compartment underneath the main flight deck. Look at the view from here. Wouldn't you much rather be there right now than stuck indoors playing flight simulator? Okay, we've passed 10,000 feet and because I cannot find any other way to adjust the actual speed value, we're gonna have to pop out the tablet autopilot here and adjust our speed upwards to 300 knots. And that will help us climb towards our top of climb. I just love this view here from the engines. I think it just shows what a cool old Soviet plane this is. Okay, we're now at our top of climb at about 20,000 feet. Switch on altitude hold on the pedestal here and you'll see the plane level off and it will cruise happily at this altitude. The other thing we're going to do is we're gonna set up VNAV on the Garmin because this will give you an indication of when to descend. So we want to be at 2,000 feet at the Cardiff waypoint, so the entry point to the star. And ideally we want to do about 1,800, 1,900 feet per minute. So very quickly, when the two feet per minute values match, that's when you should start your descent. And that's the simplest way of explaining VNAV on the Garmin 430. So while we are in cruise, what we'll do is we will take one more look out of this really cool window here, just below the flight deck. And then I will see you guys at the top of descent. Okay, so coming up to top of descent here, you can see the values are matching. We turn off altitude hold and we use this auto trim here, just a few clicks to point the nose down and make sure we're starting our descent. Just be careful not to turn that wheel too much because the nose does pitch down quite violently. All you need is just maybe three or four clicks to set the pitch correctly for a nice stable descent and we'll check the GPS to make sure we've got the right setting here. And you can see the values pretty much match, so we're on the right descent path. And the nose is pitching down, we're on our way to our arrival. Coming up through 10,000 feet, again just pop out this tablet here and dial the speed down to 250 knots and that is pretty much all we have to do until the entry point to the star. We are now at the entry point to the star so we can activate the approach and we will fly the approach into Cardiff Airport.
and just as an indication of how close we are that's the city of Cardiff out of our left window so we'll now slow down to approach speed so that's about 150 knots in this big heavy plane and we can get rid of that horrible tablet autopilot now we'll bring the gear down and then we'll start extending the flaps So being very careful here with the flap speeds because I'm not too sure what they actually are but it seems fairly forgiving. So we'll go full flaps for landing into approach config and it will fly happily in that config at about 150 knots just keeping a close eye on the GPS so we can see our approach and where we're going here. And that's it, approach config, ready for landing. Fun fact, Cardiff Airport is actually closer to the town of Barry and the resort of Barry Island, which we can see here out of our window, than it is to Cardiff itself. So as we turn to intercept the ILS here, we're gonna switch over to localizer mode, so the plane will follow the localizer path that's our approach button. So now the plane will fly the localizer and fly the glide slope all the way down to the runway and we'll just do the touchdown ourselves. And you can see the glide slope and localizer indicated there on the PFD or what would be a PFD in a modern plane, whatever it's called in this one. So here we are, we're nicely on track and we're about to land the IL-76, this massive massive Soviet plane into Cardiff Airport. On our way down I'll just briefly explain what the pedestal buttons do again. Auto throttle, approach, nav, master, heading on the left and then two enunciator lights for pitch and roll and auto trim up and down. Pretty straightforward stuff and we can confirm we're correctly configured by just taking a look at the tablet over here and you can see the buttons that we pressed on the pedestal do actually correspond to the correct autopilot functions so you barely need to touch that fake tablet autopilot. So we're about four or five DME from the runway now so let's land it. The call outs in this plane really add to the intensity, take a listen. That's autopilot disconnect. That's touchdown and open the reverses and onto the brakes. It actually stops really, really quickly this plane. Welcome everybody to Cardiff Airport and we'll just taxi our way to a parking slot then we'll look at some replays of the landing but what a what an awesome plane and i'm so glad that i've been able to figure out sort of the authentic soviet autopilot so let's check out these landings also top marks to anybody who recognizes my favorite soviet wave music that's playing during this replay apparently youtube doesn't recognize it so i might just get away with using it And a nice soft landing there. Okay guys, I hope that you found this video useful. I hope you can now operate that weird Russian autopilot. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.
one more thing before I go, if you want to fly this online, it does have a transponder, but you can't directly operate the buttons. So if you use the Pilot Edge helper here, like I've got, you can manipulate the transponder, squawk mode C, change your squawk code, and you're good to go.